What's up, guys? The world's worst you YouTuber here, Black Rose Duelist. And suddenly, I saw spellbooks are kind of good again. I was thinking of playing them uh, after I saw Cards of the Demise and what it can do for the deck. And I've been kind of testing around here. And I actually kind of like the deck now. And honestly, I'm back at it again, folks. This format in the past month has been so boring to me. Um, I understand for some of you it may be entertaining if you have one of the top tier decks. But for me, this format and this past month especially has been basically as stale as my bread in the refrigerator right now. I I've been very, very bored with Yu-Gi-Oh! But now I see some more variations happening in the format with a couple new decks. I see Clipport's kind of coming back. I see Monarchs are kind of shifting. So are Cosmo. And a lot of decks are kind of changing and adapting to the format. And now that one of my favorite decks, Spellbooks, and kind of to an other extent, a Madolce, uh, both can kind of be decent in this format. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play around with them. Um, obviously, they're not in the top five right now. Um, if I put Spellbooks anywhere near the top five, my video would get hundreds of dislikes, so um, I'm only doing it for my safety. But um, I am going to start playing Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot more, especially now that my school uh, year is over in a week. So I thought it'd be best to announce it here since most, basically my only views come from these videos. But yeah, I'm back at it again at yu gi Um I'm going to be making lots more videos. I have a schedule that at least will have three videos a week. So, enough about me. Let's get into the top five decks this format. So, I just talked about it. Number five, Clipboards. Clipboards, I thought were done. Like, they were six feet under. Not even six feet under. They were like a thousand feet under. They were in the grave, gone for good. Never would think they'd come back again. And all of a sudden, they rose to the back of the crowd like, I don't know, Jesus on Easter. Um, that's the day Jesus comes back, right? Yeah. See, they resurrected like n crazy, okay? They, um, I had no idea that clipboards would ever have the ability to come back and they do because of cards of demise this format is going to be crazy because now people understand how good this card is basically you draw three cards and then you discard all of them at the end of the turn is what i get from it and with clipboards that's fantastic because the main problem with the deck has been that you can't get your scout fast enough and the fact that you can draw three cards along with let's say you draw in your first hand if you draw three cards along with the five you get uh, it's almost confirmed you're going to get a scout or something to search your scout with. So that's basically all you need to get the deck rolling. And the fact that they can now do that now is really, really good. Because before this, scout was very, very hard to get. And you need scout to win, basically. Um, this deck also has the best floodgates. Uh, they can really, really, really beat other decks uh, with uh, their floodgates like Imperial Iron Wall. And I guess in some extent they can do the spell fragrance device, whatever. Um, they just have to make sure that they put their pendulum scales out first. Uh, and then the other uh, sp like traps they can just use. They obviously can play three solemn strikes. So they really can pack a punch. Uh, so, Clipwort's a lot more consistent now, lots more power plays, they prove that they can come back from the dead, uh, I can't really put them at any place higher than 5, uh, so yeah, I'm putting them at number 5, just because I think they're kind of the one to look out for this format. At number 4, we have uh, Pendulum Mix, because I asked a lot of people for this list, because like I said, I haven't really been into Yu-Gi-Oh!, I've been looking here and there, but it's not like I've really been down in the trenches actually playing Yu-Gi-Oh! as much as I used to. Um, so I've been asking people what the best decks have been at events. I've been looking at events to make this video. And instead of just saying, like, one, like, Magician Pendulum or Perform Pal or Pepe-like deck, uh, they've just said, like, a mix of Pendulums. So I'm going to put that at number four. Uh, Magic Specters, Perform Pals, Odd Eyes, Draco Slayers. There's lots and lots of variants. Uh, Pendulum Magicians, they all can blend together very, very well. And they make decks that... Honestly, like, you can't be at a certain point in the duel because they have so much leverage over you. Uh, once they get a certain amount of pendulums in their extra deck and they have so much card advantage, it's really, really hard to be a deck like these because they just keep on coming and coming and coming and coming. And that's basically what pendulums are made for. And that's kind of another reason why Klees are high on this list. They just, they keep on coming back, like, from the dead and... Uh, it just really, really can pack a punch if you can get the good cards out. Um, I think the Draco Slayers are kind of essential at least to have three or four in each of these decks. Just because to beat Cosmo, you really need to go into that uh, Ignister uh, to really 
pack the punch you need to win because it doesn't target and it can get rid of the big ships. So uh, mixed with that and obviously the odd ice cards uh, with more support in the last set, they definitely are better now. Uh, the fusion's really, really good. Odd Eyes, Vortex Dragon, along with um, just the uh, Performer Pal Sorcerers and stuff where they can just destroy everything you need, uh, get everything you need, and then get back everything. And obviously... Uh, some builds play Ariadne, which can really help gain your solemn notice or strikes. So the deck is just very, very kind of a cluster. Uh, they even include Magic Specters. Magic Specters can be in there. Uh, but it's kind of like a good type of cluster. It's like a cluster. I don't know. Number three, we have Burning Abyss, Phantom Knight. This deck kind of feels like, no pun intended, the fire has kind of been burnt out. Um, it's still obviously a really, really good deck, but to me it feels like people have noticed it's not really as good as people are saying it was. When it first debuted like two week, two two months ago-ish, um, a lot of people were going crazy, they were going bonkers, like, oh my gosh, Phantom Knights, Burning Abyss, all level threes, Xyz, sign me in. But honestly, it, it really isn't as good as it seems uh, in a format where you have decks like uh, Monarch, which can completely stomp this deck out. Um, and uh, also you have Cosmos, which are obviously annoying as heck. <laughs> but the deck is still really, really good. You can get your crazy XC plays. You get cre- well, what happened there? <laughs> you get crazy advantage. You get all this crazy, crazy plays and it's just, it, it gets crazy but the problem is your end result isn't as good as your end result in these other decks because you do get all you, your rank threes out but those rank threes aren't as powerful as getting ships out continuously uh the dark lady and all those cards can kind of negate these effects you have fire kings being sprinkled in the mix now you have uh, monarchs making it so you can't come out of the uh, extra deck there's so many many, many problems that this deck faces because they're very, very fast and they get lots of stuff out there. But the problem is there's not much punch that those decks can really deal out, if that makes sense. So yeah, you get all these rank threes out, but they don't really do much, if that makes any sense to you guys. Uh, I might be completely stupid right now. Tell me if I am in the comments. You always do. But it just feels as though the deck is very fast and very powerful, but just doesn't deal the same damage and have the same impact in the field as a Cosmo or a Monarch would have. Speaking of that, number two is Monarch. I obviously can't put Cosmo at number two. Oops, I've never done that before. I've never purposely said it was number one, but I think it's pretty obvious now. Um, Monarchs. They're very, very good, and there's the new uh, extra deck monarchs have been lingering around uh, with going into synchros and Xyz, which is cool. Um, the deck is just, I hate monarchs and Cosmo, and that might be the main reason why. I, that it's pretty obvious that's the reason why I don't like this format. I've always, always found the appeal of monarchs confusing. I understand they're these big, bulky guys that get tribute effects, but I always find that type of play style really, really boring. I'm sorry if you hear a cabinet opening. I'm seriously opening a box of cookies right now. Uh, just talking about Monarchs and Cosmo make me depressed, so um, I'm just kind of, you know, stress eating. But, uh, no, I'm serious. Like, I, I did get triple chocolate chunk cookie mix, crust days, bakery style, new and improved box. Um, the ingredients are one egg, one stick of half- Oh, I don't know if I have an egg. No, seriously, um, that's going to drive me crazy. I'm going to check the refrigerator right now. Monarchs, again, you tribute. Okay, we have like tens, 10 of eggs. Great. Okay, after this video, I'm eating tons of cookies. But as I was saying, uh, Monarchs are very, 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 very annoying to me. I hate them almost as much as Cosmo, and that's saying a lot. The deck... Yes, it's really, really powerful, and it does that fast and efficiently. You get quickly out these 2,800 beaters with more 2,400 beaters. You draw a ton, which who would have ever thought tribute decks would be consistent? Well, now they are with things like uh, Pandemic or whatever, the card that makes you draw two, and then you get to banish it and add another. It's just redonkadonk. Uh, you also have the cards that, like the tenacity or whatever that makes you search for another uh monarch spell it's just really stupid but it's really good and it proves to work now they get to go to the extra deck so you know they do them basically the main reason why this deck is good is because 
they don't need much filler. They just do what they do, and they bring out big beaters off of big beaters off of big beaters with effects that banish stuff and shuffle stuff. So it's just a good, strong deck. Number one, obviously, is Cosmo. I'm so enthusiastic about this deck. No, like, honestly, I said this in a video before. Cosmos, they made me so excited when they first came out. Even though their play style wasn't exhilarating when they first came out, the art style, the fact that they had Wizard of Oz and Star Wars together, two of my favorite movies, uh, very, and they were books too, but uh, made me really, 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 really happy. Uh, but sadly, their art style isn't enough to make them cool. They're just really, really, really annoying. Like, they make me cringe. Um, thankfully, I haven't been to an event post Bosch. Because honestly, I don't know if I could deal. I think I would throw my cards in my opponent's face if I played Cosmo. Um, because, I, honestly, I took a break since after Bosch. Because I just can't handle these cards anymore. They just make me so annoyed. But I think I will come back now, like I said, with spell books. Honestly, if you want to watch me talk about Cosmos, I've talked about them every single month now for the, since, like, August. So you can check those out. I think you'll be entertained thoroughly. But the deck is just better than ever now with the Fire Kings being thrown in, the Dark Lady, the Dark Planet. It just keeps on getting worse. It just keeps getting more downhill from now. They actually got helped by the ban list. I don't know who thinks Emergency Teleport 2 would hurt the deck. It didn't. Alert it to help the deck a ton because now they have even more dark. So it is what it is. We're just going to have to rough it through. Um, I think... After they win Nationals, they'll probably... They might win Worlds. I don't know. They have to get them in Worlds anyways. I don't know if they'll be legal for Worlds. So we'll probably see Burning Abyss win Worlds, I'm predicting. Or Blue Eyes, something like that. But speaking of Blue Eyes, I have to get into Blue Eyes. I know they're doing really good in the OCG, and they're not doing that great here. But we'll see. We'll... 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 You'll keep in contact. So, for more top fives, more Yu Gi Oh stuff, I'm back. Um, expect at least three videos a week. It's been like one every other week. So, uh, I just been really busy with my gaming channel, which I don't want you guys to feel like I'm isolating you away from my gaming channel. Uh, the gaming channel has been struggling. <laughs> so happy, but um, it's kind of starting to pick up in a way. I'm starting to get like a real gaming schedule. To where, like, I can make a few videos in one day. Um, and then that would, that will save me for the rest of the week. Um, so, then during the week, I can make Yu-Gi-Oh! videos like I usually do. Especially when summer comes around when all I have to really worry about is Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, YouTube gaming and stuff. Which, really, what is that really to worry about? It's like, um, <laughs> like a, I don't know. Like a, what's like a really rich person thing? Like a retired person complain about having to read a book or something, you know what I mean? Um, which, I mean, they deserve to relax. I don't even deserve to relax. Like, they've been through hard work. I really, what do I do if I go to school and play Yu-Gi-Oh! and games? So, I mean, even the retired people, like, they have the right to relax. Like, I don't even have the right to complain about relaxing. They even have a, re they, like, I'm complaining about relaxing. Like, I'm complaining about having to play video games. And I don't even have the right to do that. But even, like, the retired people have the right to complain because they went through the work. Anyways, thanks for watching. If anyone actually listened to that conversation, I feel bad for you. Um, the doors are open, so my neighbors probably listen to this conversation, too. So they're probably better off than you are because they can shut the door. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Goodbye.